Joel o Joe right. Bomberger. Joel. Joel la bomba. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Joel. Uh, we're so excited. I'm just going to say a little bit like where we met you. Yeah. And then we can go from there and Love get to it. know your story and see what God does here. Yes, I'm so into it. Awesome. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, You're welcome thank here. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Joel, we know you from Pacifica Christian High School. That's right. Okay. And we want to give a shout out because we're super excited that our son is going to Pacifica That's right. Christian here in Newport Beach. It's it's like two blocks from our house. Did you know that? Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Wow. So, Joseph can technically walk to school, but he's never done it so far. Oh, <laughs> he's already so tired. Him, you should make him run to school. He'll get faster. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> And, uh, and you're one of the coaches yes. in the running team. I'm just going to say, right. run, like, I don't know. No, cross specific. country. Cross country, okay. Well, he's pr he'll probably do track and field as well this spring. Okay, so, so that's a different thing. Yes, track <laughs> okay. and field, shorter distances, cross country, okay, longer okay. distances, and over the country, hence cross oh, country. Nice. Yeah. There you go. Well, I love it. And, you know, apparently Joseph is loving it. And you're one of the coaches, so he said, you know, Joel, he's always you know, debating stuff about Christianity <laughs> and Jesus. And Joseph, our son, said, you should have him on your podcast. <laughs> so we're just taking him up on... Thank you, Joseph. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I welcome. Got, I got to shout out Joseph because I think he is the fastest one on our team right now as a freshman so wow. that's awesome uh, yeah. he's he's been loving running and there was definitely it felt like always kind of even a god connection with him mm -hmm. i really enjoyed getting to know him and he's got an awesome spirit mm -hmm. just like yeah. an awesome spirit um so we've had some great conversations and i'm so grateful for this connection nice uh, you guys are really incredible thank you man when you rolled up with your um your spread one day. What, what was it? it that was Mili. Mili made uh, tortas ahogadas. Tortas, yeah. yeah. Man, those were so good. I can't wait to bring more love. <laughs> yes, yeah. got to. That's what, yeah, Mili loves to do that. Uh, she lo I mean, Mili is great at doing anything. You know, she um, like Mexican food. She can make tamales. She can make tortas ahogadas. She can make all kinds of Mexican dishes, and she's phenomenal. And nobody has ever said, Mili, don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, the whole just, team was like, Joseph, that was crazy. Your parents were so, like, they had this huge spread. Everybody was so impressed and loved it so much. That's all. Awesome. Oh, Thank God you for your so hospitality good. and generosity. Yeah. So oh, man. So, we're so excited and we're so happy that you're here. And that's the connection, right? And you started, you, you were just saying that you started at Pacifica at the same time that Joseph did. Yeah. You were brand new to the school, too. Yep. Right? Yeah. So, my, um, my wife and I, we have lived in Huntington Beach for five years total, but over the span of 10 years. So we've moved around a lot for the gospel, preaching, and um, just following the Lord as He's led us in different areas and different evangelistic initiatives. So we had been previously living out here, so we're familiar with the area. We have good community out here with our missions organization, but we had just moved back in June. And this is the first time that we live out here with our four kids because mm. before we were here, it was before we had kids. And so when we moved back, I knew um, Neil, who is now the uh, head coach of the Pacific cross country team. I had known him from when we lived before and he found out I was moving back and he's like, I need an assistant coach. Would you be considered wow. doing this? Oh, so cool. Nice. And honestly, I wasn't going to consider it because... Really? Well... Um, I mean, we just moved our whole family across the country. I had a lot of other stuff going on with ministry. So it wasn't even like I had the time to give mm -hmm. or really even needed the money, though that would have been nice. But as I prayed about it, I actually kept having dreams that I was coaching um, runners. Wow. And I mean, I kept praying and just felt like it was actually a very important thing to get involved in the community's life. Um, and not just in kind of some of the ministry bubble. Like, I, I don't know if you guys are in full-time ministry, but sometimes you can get in a little bit of a ministry bubble mm -hmm. and you All know, your you, friends are Christian. Yeah, everybody you, you loves Jesus, and ministry, and but it's, it's like, yeah, it's very, and I'm like, no, I want to get in with the families who live here and the kids who have mm. grown up here. Wow. Um, and I know that even though Pacifica is a great school and there's incredible students there, but just because you have a Christian school doesn't mean that everybody goes there, has a vibrant relationship with mm. Christ. Mm -hmm. Or even our Christians, you know, some people go there as other religions just because they want a good education. Mm -hmm. So I thought, what a perfect opportunity for me to be able to 
disciple these kids on something I'm passionate about running, running. Um, and it's, it's proved to be an incredibly fun and fruitful year. And Joseph, honestly, being a highlight. <laughs> wow. It's a, it's a huge privilege it really you know, is. to have you in our lives, oh, especially you. with Joseph. You're like, oh my God, I feel like I'm so loved by you, you know, because uh, it's a special, yeah. you know, God's people are special. Yeah. We are family. That's right. You know, and we can connect and we have the same vision and purpose in life. Yeah. So it's wonderful. Yeah. I appreciate you saying that. And I, I agree. I felt even since we first met you guys, like I just feel, yeah, that family. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. tell that the, the spirit of God, you know, within us. Yeah. So. You know what? I, I recognize the authenticity of Pacifica. Mm -hmm. The people who works at Pacifica, it's true. David O'Neill. And I'm like, this is normal for me and weird because I don't feel that way everywhere. Right. I'm so real that people get scared. <laughs> they don't know with the, too much information. Right. You know, hold it for you. It's like, I, I don't want to know. Well, you ask me, how are you? And I'm telling you, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm passing for this situation. And, stuff, and they get like, oh, too much. Because too much, yeah, yeah. Too much information. To You're going to make me pray for you or yeah. something. <laughs> but like, you yeah. know, and he's yeah. telling like, oh boy, this guy is so real. Yeah. And people is craving for that. Yeah. That's I why agree. they're there. Yep. And I'm crying in every meeting. I'm mm. crying like this is real. Yes, it's real. Like, but I, I don't know. It's yes. still a special place. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so happy that I'm there. Man, yeah. praise God. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm happy God led me there as well. Wow. So two things. Okay. Yeah. To try to connect maybe where we can go in this episode, but we can go anywhere you know, you like. But... One is I have a confession, okay. okay? I went to a missionary base, a YWAM missionary base yep. in my state, my home state, Mexico, Jalisco, okay, uh, in Guadalajara, which was not really in Guadalajara, was in a little town called Chapala, which is the only, like the biggest lake in Mexico. Okay. okay. So there was a YWAM base for people that don't know, that's Youth with a Mission. Yep. Uh, and I loved it. And I was there just as a volunteer helping during the summer. Wow. And I think I've always, I think, I, I mean, that was a long time ago, but I think I remember like saying, you know, God, I'm, I'm going to serve you in some sort of like way, shape or form yep. through YWAM someday, you know, like I oh, really wow. want to do the DTS or something like Whoa. that one day. I never did. Right? So that's a confession Beto. that I never did. And here's your opportunity. Right? And then wow. you're saying, as you come into the studio, you're wow. saying, oh, I'm the missionary the with my whim. <laughs> oh, it's so crazy. And, and, I'm, moment. and yeah. I'm having this conversation, but Millie, I feel like I want to offer him the studio. Do you think we can give him a discount? Like, what are you talking about, Beto? Don't ask me because for me, is I'm, we're going to charge him zero. <laughs> yeah. I see his material. I know what he's doing. And wow. we are blessed. We're going to bless him, you know, and it's free for him. He can come and this is su casa. Yes. Wow. So, me, so wow. my podcast is su podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and, and I mean, in a sense, I feel like maybe God is saying, hey, remember? That's your opportunity. You that? Wow. Uh, well, hey, I, you're I, in I media might now. Some, I might have some uh, YM connections for you guys. And especially once Joseph graduates, I'm going to swoop him in. He's going to do a DTS. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that would yes. be wonderful. Yes. Because also, you know, another thing that Millie. So, Millie, just kind of like you know, telling our story super quick. Uh, Millie grew up Catholic in Mexico. I grew up evangelical for yeah. the most part, you know. And then uh, I came here to America in 2004. And then I met Millie in 2005. And then, she, you know, she started kind of like going to church and received Jesus in her heart and more like evangelical you know, yeah. type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of like the background, right? And when she, when we married... I think for a season, you know, Millie used to say, I want to be a missionary. Like, I mm. want to be in a missionary mm -hmm. family, but not really knowing what that entails. Wow. Right? And I think, you know, part of what we're doing now with the podcast, it's it's, it's kind of like a missionary Absolutely. something, yeah. you know, yes. we're, yep. we're online, you know. And, yep. and even before we were recording, you were saying that, you know, you have your platforms where you share the gospel. 
and that you have people tuning in from other countries yeah all from your own home yeah right and you can share the good news without necessarily having to travel even though you know you said that yeah. you travel too and do yeah absolutely those events right so yeah I mean that's to me that's epic. So that's that's one thing I was gonna say about you know the connection. You guys are totally missionaries, <laughs> podcast missionaries, 100. Oh wow. Okay, uh, I'm receiving that. <laughs> and then it. the other one is, uh, Millie was saying you know, before we we started recording that when she went to Pacifica to check if Joseph was gonna be in like yeah. before knowing he was going to be accepted, right? And before knowing he was going to get a really generous scholarship. Uh, Millie felt God spoke to her at Pacifica and said, I brought you from so far so that you can be here because these are your people. Wow. Right here. And now we met you, you know, and Joseph, I mean, technically Joseph said, oh, you got to have, you know, Joel on your podcast. So I feel like, okay, we're meeting the, the people God put us in our path. Wow. It, yeah. That's you. For me, it is so beautiful. Imagine God with 12 guys. Yeah. What he did, Jesus, what he did with just only 12. Yep. And I'm at Pacifica with all these wonderful leaders, people like you, like yep. together we can do something huge because who he lives in us is so powerful. That's right. You know, and it's a gift what we have. Imagine, I, I was so excited the other day telling Beto, Beto, we have the Holy Spirit yeah. and we have the helmet of salvation that basically is the mind of Christ. Yeah. We have it. Yeah. We just need to ask for it. Yeah. And there we go. Man, you thank know, you, it's Jesus. like it's beautiful. It's like a revelation at that moment. Yeah. The, the power is in us for his kingdom. That's right. You know, we're the head and not the tail. For his kingdom. Man, that's right. Right? Yeah. That that's amazing so i i think once i told david like we're in this together yes all these people they're come here and they're not religious they don't follow jesus <laughs> welcome to pacifica right that's right <laughs> yes <laughs> yes yeah so how do you live that out how do you live the you know being at pacifica and maybe meeting new kids and how how do you find out like if they're jesus followers i mean that's that is a great question and i would say you know based off what you said those two things um touching on the missionary aspect is that we're all missionaries mm. uh, and that is the Christian faith is yeah. that we are all to be missionaries. We're on mission. That's our purpose. Yes. Yeah. We are on mission with Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. So I really, you know, I, the term missionary sometimes I think gets a little, um, it can create some false um, paradigms. My goal is to have every believer understand that they're on mission to fulfill the Great Commission, which is that every tribe, every tongue, every nation would have the ability to confess the name of Jesus. Recognize. Um, so you guys are totally missionaries, you know, um, and and that's the thing. Like, okay, I I work in as a missions group with youth with a mission and with the kind of the base called Circuit Riders, based out of Huntington Beach here, but. Even my role at Pacifica is a job, but I see it as a mission field. You know, I feel the Lord has invited me into that as a place of being the light. And I believe that's for all of us. He's put us all in, like you said, when the, when the Holy Spirit spoke to you and said, I have brought you so far to, to put you here. These are your people. He put you here because you have something inside of you. You have a call inside of you. You have a call inside of you. You have an anointing and a gift of God that that the people around you need. Mm. And so it's, yes, I love these connections. I think this is the Lord's connection, but everywhere we go, the Holy Spirit is within you and you have something to give others mm. and you have something to shine light into others. Um, so, yeah, it, I mean, it's been awesome in, to answer your question about Pacifica. I mean, my goal is always to just be authentically me and passionate about Jesus and passionate about the Holy Spirit's power everywhere I go. So I'm not going to kind of change my message or water it down. Um, but it has been interesting, I think, especially in a, a place like Pacifica, because everybody kind of knows how to, to say the right words because it is a Christian school and they do have devotional. So, mm -hmm. so they can kind of like nod their head and agree with you, but it actually takes much deeper relationship to start to understand where they're really at. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, when, especially I think about 
when you get squeezed and you're under pressure is when the insides really start to show. Yeah. Um, and that's when you can start to see. So I think it's even interesting. Like when I, when I look at cross country, for instance, and sports, I think do a good job of this. They put you under pressure, the pressure of competition or the pain of injury or the sorrow of not hitting your goals or not performing well. And all of that brings out stuff that's inside and I can start to see, okay, there's a lot of anxiety here that this person is dealing with, or, Hey, there's a lot of anger or there's a lot of shame. The triggers. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then you can start to see it and I'm like, okay, what's going on on the inside mm. that they need to deal with. And that's, I mean, that's my big passion point. I love running and I actually love training in running coaching, but I'm more like I, I gave a diva at Pacifica and I was like, listen, guys, I could care less if you hit a personal record this year or if you win league finals. What I want is for you to have a vibrant relation with Christ. Mm. What I want is for you to represent him well. Wow. So even if you're winning, but you're not representing him well, it's a failure. Mm. Wow. And if you lose, but you represent him well in the loss that's a win. So it doesn't matter how you perform. What matters is how your attitude is reflecting Christ. Uh, and I would say, I'll just go into this because we're talking about it. It's fun. Uh, for my running journey as well, I had a similar experience. So just this past fall, I ran uh, my personal best and a marathon in Philly. And I was very ecstatic. I ran a 2.46. Um, I was hoping for a sub 2.45. It's a long story why it didn't happen, but I still got a personal record. I was very happy. And then in this April, I ran the Boston Marathon. I knew I would not be able to hit the same 246 because we just had a, our fourth child and I didn't get to train as much. But I knew that I would still be able to do an okay run, like maybe a 250 or a 255, just slightly slower, right? And my training all went very well, but the day of the race came and I do not know what happened, but my body just gave up on me. Everything went wrong and I ended up having to walk like, no, I wouldn't say half of it, but a lot of it. And I ran the slowest time I've ever run in a marathon. My body was hurting. It was so painful. And halfway through that moment, you know, the pain that you're in, in the middle of a marathon, mm. as well as the emotional tax that's on you from saying, man, I did all this training. I know my body can do more and it's not cooperating right now. I remember that there was so many thoughts that flooded my mind that were temptations mm. of just like once you're weak is when you are susceptible to the temptations of the enemy, temptations mm. of compromise, temptations of thinking less of yourself, all, all of these things. Yeah. And you even feel justified in bad attitudes because of the pain and the situation you're in. And it was in that moment that the Holy Spirit spoke to me and was like, you are not less because you're performing bad. You, I still know how you can perform based on what you did in November. I still know who Joel is, but you need to now respond properly regardless of how you perform. So it was really like this moment of like, I am, it doesn't matter how I outwardly perform what people see. Cause I was even thinking like, man, people are going to think like, man, he's so slow. I know, but I'm like, no, what really matters is how they see the inside of Joel. How do I respond? Wow. You ready to, you know? Yes. Um, so I think that's a, it's an analogy for life and everything. It's not just with running, you know, finances get tight. Mm. Uh, we're going into an election season. The tensions that come up, I'm not election season, election week, the tensions that come up there, you know, people feeling misunderstood, misheard, the angers, all that stuff, yeah, yeah. it exposes things. And when that happens, we have to make a choice. How are we going to respond? And honestly, you often when those tense moment comes, you don't have the ability to make the choice that comes from the life that was built in God developing character and integrity before that moment. Ooh. So when an intense moment happens, yeah. sometimes you, you're just in it and you don't know, you, you're just responding based off what's inside. And I think that's why, man, I'm sorry, I'm just going off on it. I think that's why the disciples, they could not cast out that demon when he was up on the mountain transfiguration. And they're like, why couldn't we cast out? Why couldn't we cast it out? And Jesus was his 
phrase was okay because of your unbelief, but this kind does not come out by prayer and fasting. What he meant was, hey, the lifestyle of faith that it takes, the faith that it takes comes through a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. And it's not just the moment because Jesus didn't pray, stop and pray and fast for that boy. He had a life of integrity and mm -hmm. fasting and prayer that when he came up to that demonic situation, he's like, I know that thing has to leave. And the disciples were just kind of, oh yeah, we're just chilling with Jesus. Of course the demons are subject to us. But they were not developing the character that it took and the faith that it takes through prayer and fasting. So when the situation came, they had nothing. And I think that's a challenge to all of us is we can't wait for the situation to get bad. We have to, He's ready. even when it's good, dig deep in the Lord, in prayer and fasting and develop our character, our integrity and our relationship with him so that when things go bad, we're ready because mm -hmm. we have the spirit of God inside mm -hmm. of us and we have developed the perseverance and the faith and the trust in him that nothing can phase us. That's so good. I was hearing, uh, uh, well, it's a song. It's like a rap song, hip hop song in, mm -hmm. in Spanish. So it's this, this guy from Mexico City and he's a Christian guy, right? So he has this song and it says, you got to pass through Leah to get to Rachel. Right. And I was like, what? Whoa. Yeah, I passed through Leah to get to Rachel. And I was like, what does he mean? You know? And then uh, the guy that put the song, he's explaining a little bit. And he's like, oh, I love that line in that song, you know? And then I remember, you know, because I've been reading the Old Testament. Now I'm in the, well, I've been reading the Bible in a year. Yeah. So now I'm in the New Testament, but uh, kind of like trying to tap back into when I was reading that. I'm like, oh, yeah, it makes so much sense because the guy really wants the one sister right which is rachel and he's like oh that's the one she's so pretty she's so beautiful yes but the mm -hmm. dad is like well if you want her you got to work for me like seven years you know oh, for her i'll do it you know yeah and then <laughs> he kind of gets tricked into ended up like getting you know leah <laughs> yes yeah. and then the guy's like well if at the end you know this means that i'm gonna get rachel the one i really want it's worth it you know so he spends like 14 years of his life right so that he can be with in this case right the woman he loved but i mean to me it's, it's almost like that uh like how bad do you want the things of god right yes. how bad do you want mm -hmm. the things of jesus that's right and are you willing to to go through the i mean because i mean we could tell you that's basically what our podcast is about <laughs> yeah, yeah. And daily you, things you were mentioning about fasting and praying yeah sometimes uh -huh. we do that we practice that and nothing happens right you know like mm. i didn't hear you i didn't see you i'm right. just looking and just like when i know what you want from me yeah. right but then uh a period for me took me four years right and make and the, the the hard part because we're in this world and everybody around me nobody fast right so i'm by myself not my church, yeah. not my family, no one. So I'm the crazy one who will survive 24, <laughs> 25 days with just water. Yeah. And I'm dying and everybody yeah. is crying and <laughs> my mom is going to cry. But you're like, Millie, you're going to meet Jesus right now. You're, you're going to be, be with, with Jesus <laughs> soon, Millie. <laughs> oh, hard. yeah. Yes. But then yeah. one day, like, oh boy, thank you, Jesus. You was working in my life yes. without me knowing that. Right. You yep. know, he took sin from me yep. through the fasting. Yes. Mm. So he does amazing. Oh, sometimes my manager, I remember once he came like like with this anger, furious uh, fight. And yep. it was like super calm. Like my heart yeah. was like so protected yep. with the full armor of God. Yeah. And thanks to prior and fasting, right. I was ready to fight with the demons. Yes, in absolutely. Front of me. Yep. He almost went like his chin, you know, like red, <laughs> red, like yeah. he's going to have heart yep. attack yep. because he's so mad at me. And I was like, sorry, Mark, I love you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Uh, uh, it's crazy. Yeah. And I, I mean, to go off on fasting a little bit, because I actually, I am passionate about that topic is that a lot of times when you're fasting, you don't feel the breakthrough. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. it's more like I'm just like, man, I feel even worse than before. You know, I feel more mm -hmm. sinful. I'm so weak. I feel all this stuff. But we have to understand that, you know, fasting really does shift things in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. 
You look at Daniel when he started to fast because he saw the prophecies in Jeremiah that after the 70 year period, God was going to bring the exiles back. So he set himself to pray and fast about that. And 21 days in is when he encountered the angel and the angel said, Hey, the minute you started fasting, I was sent from God. Oh yeah. But he said, I was held up by the Prince of Persia, mm. a spiritual power. Yes. And it was Daniel's fasting and prayer that gave the heavenly forces the strength and the ability to break through the Prince of Persia, break through this demonic stronghold in the heavenly realm and be sent with a message to Daniel. So I think we we often either don't fast to the breakthrough or we don't we don't fast like oh I don't feel anything happening. Well, it's like well you don't know what's happening in the spirit realm. So when you get and hit your knees in prayer, or when you set yourself to fast, even if you don't feel any breaks, you don't feel God saying anything. Sometimes the answer comes weeks later, mm -hmm. or even years later. But it's that faith that is being established to seek God in that place and rely on. Uh, and the beautiful thing about both fasting and prayer is you're relying on things that you can't see in the natural, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like, I am trusting that this is doing something supernatural because, you know, if you just saw me sitting in this room by myself, like just praying to like the ceiling and I'm not eating food, you know, in the natural realm, people are like, Weird. what are you doing? <laughs> you know, like that makes yeah. no sense. But in the spiritual realm, things are happening um, and you'll, you'll see that manifest in your life for sure. Wow. I just so love, good. I love the feeling. Yeah. Depending on Jesus. That's right. And not in food. Uh, people, they, they will say, that's not for me. I will never do that. I can. And I feel that the, the mind is so powerful yeah. that they believe that. Yep. Because it's not that difficult yep. when you grab Jesus and it's like, okay, that's you who's going to yep. do it. You know, I yeah. have your power in me. That's right. So for me, it's, it's the Holy huge. Spirit grace. Yes. Yeah, it's his, his power. Okay. But I would agree because um, I grew up in a context that like the most I ever heard of anybody fasting was 36 hours. You know, we would do like the 36 hour famine, you know, at youth group. And um, I remember I was like, man, if you go any more, more than that, you might die, you know. And then that was kind of what I grew up in and r before I really knew the Lord. And then once I start, once I encountered the Holy Spirit and my life really got changed my senior year of high school, I remember doing a three day fast and I was like, I might die, you know? And I was like, <laughs> this is crazy. I don't know if this is even good for me. And then now fast forward, I've done multiple 40 day fasts. You know, I've done 21 day fasts and- Hi, my and people, see, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you exist? Yeah. So you were real? <laughs> it totally see, that really wasn't uh, insane, you. are you Not saying? insane, not insane at <laughs> wow. all. Wow, um, okay. So, and, and uh, yeah, it's, in, it's incredible. And now I actually feel conflicted because I am way more of an athlete. Mm -hmm. So I actually, if I fast on water, just juice, that means that I'm like not able to run to with run. the cross country kids. I'm not able to do all these things, which hear me for anybody watching this sometimes is very important because our sports or our fitness becomes an idol mm -hmm. that you need to give up. Yes. So I'm, I'm constantly like, Oh Lord, if you want me to fast, I'm totally willing to give up running. You know, I'm willing to get out, give that up for a season because you are the greatest prize, not my sports achievements or whatever. But then there's also other creative fasts that I think should be just an aspect in our Christian life because self-discipline is a fruit of the spirit. Mm. And I think cr learning to crucify your flesh is so valuable as a believer. So something my wife and I have been trying to do very well is fast our phones for 24 hours once a week. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, I don't know, 3 p.m. on Saturday, I'll literally turn my phone off, put it away for 24 hours. So no social media, I'm not even checking texts and complete like I'm fasting that to get my mind back. And I'll like, I'll even go to church and not using maps to get there. I'll take one, you know, an old school, like writing it down. Yes. Wow. Um, and then if I have a reminder or if I feel like I need to text somebody, I have to literally write down, text this person. Cause I, you know, like, <laughs> but yes. I, that's a thing. And then I know every year for us, we take the whole month of January off of all social media, all movies, all TVs because again I, we need to build in a regular rhythm of uh, denying ourselves 
physical pleasure or fleshly desires in order to prioritize God. Cause I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having a phone. It's a useful tool. I'm not saying mm -hmm. there's anything wrong with being online. Like right now we're online and could be reaching people, but all of those things that can be good, even like food also need to be put in their place for the superior reality of experiencing and knowing Jesus. Yeah. I love what it. brought you to that? Cause it's, it's really interesting. Like you mentioned the Holy spirit and I guess as a believer, to me, it's kind of like easy to tap into these topics, right? But I always want to give a little bit of um, room for the skeptic and maybe even an invitation, mm -hmm. you know, for the people that, you know, maybe they're interested in Christianity. Maybe, you know, they hear Jesus for whatever reason it makes sense, you know, but the stuff about fasting and, you know, praying in the spirit or, you know, encountering the Holy Spirit, like going deeper sounds maybe like too much. Right, even for I don't know. I mean, because I, you know, <laughs> I've grown up. I'm 43, you know, and I've been in all kinds of different churches. Yeah, you know, and churches that oh no, that's that's too much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, anyways, what do you think? And I know Millie's story, like for example, with fasting, she's been delivered from from strongholds in her life, yeah. like alcoholism. Yeah. Right. Was oh, okay. I yeah. I've been able to conquer that through Christ and yes. through fasting. Yes. Right. So it's. It makes sense, right? But what would be your invitation for people to say, hey, you need more of the Holy Spirit if you are if you come to Christ? Why? Like, just so that they can start giving up these things? Like, what is enticing about that in a sense? You know, like, yeah, no, Holy I, Spirit. I love that. Um, yeah, the Holy Spirit is um, the best. <laughs> and He is the most fulfilling. He, the Spirit of God is who makes the heavenly realities manifest in our life. Mm. So He takes what is in heaven and what is accessible to us through Jesus Christ and the cross and He gives it to us. That is what the Holy Spirit's job is. And it was so eye-opening to me. I grew up as a Christian my whole life, but it was when I encountered the Holy Spirit's presence that I said, oh my goodness. That's when I got free of addictions to pornography. I got free of depression. Um, even I had, you know, suicidal thoughts. Um, I was a partier and angry and hateful and a, like swearing, even though I was calling myself a Christian. When I encountered the Holy Spirit, there was a presence and a love and a peace and a power that I experienced that changed me. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is worth living my whole life for, and I will give everything else up. And I, I'm very passionate about that because that's the difference between nominal Christianity, calling yourself a Christian, going to church, and actually knowing Jesus Christ mm -hmm. through his spirit. And that's what I want people to know. Even like a Pacifica, you know, you can you can go to Pacifica and go to all the devos and go to a good Christian school, but that doesn't mean that you actually know the creator of the universe who has mm. plans for you. Wow. Um, and so then what I would say, okay, why are you fasting? Why are you giving up all this stuff? Doesn't make any sense. Well, it's because in Jesus is found life. True life is found in him. He says, John 10, 10, Jesus says, I came that you may have life and life abundantly. All life comes from him. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. And then he continues on, but the enemy, the thief, has come to kill, steal, and destroy. So everything in your life where you feel pain, you feel destruction, you feel like something's stolen from you, you feel an injustice, it's not from God, it is the result of the thief. Mm -hmm. It's the result of the way of the world. And the only way you're going to find satisfaction is actually through Jesus Christ and His Spirit. But the reality is the way of the world pulls us into the thief's way. So, like I said, you know, food isn't bad, you know, uh, TV isn't necessarily bad, but all of those things pull us from the superior reality of knowing Jesus. And that's the true life. So as we learn to deny ourselves and not for the purpose of denying yourself, like it's not like, okay, deny myself just to be hard on myself. No, it's in order to get something, mm -hmm. to get God. It's to reorient myself so that 
it's positioning myself to receive from him what he already has for me. And we just get distracted. You know, we're easy to get distracted by our phones, by social media, or even by simple things like food. And it pulls us from experiencing life in Jesus. I know this is a long answer, but I, I, I'm explaining it because in the same way, how I first encountered the Holy Spirit was I actually had a moment where I gave up snowboarding for a season. And for me, snowboarding, I was a big snowboarder. It was everything in my life. I thought I was going to have the most fun winter ever by just snowboarding as much as possible. Similar to like, you know, cross country or running or whatever it is. And the first day of snowboarding, my snowboards fell off the roof of my car and scattered across the highway. And I was so dumbfounded. I was like, what is going on? And I remember kneeling down and praying. And I had this thought in my mind that said, you need to give up snowboarding and follow me. <gasps> and I was just like, what? That's a weird thought to have. Because wow. listen, like people are like, oh, you hear God? Like, what does God's voice sound like? I'm like, it wasn't an audible voice. It was, it, I thought it was my own thought. Mm. But then I was like, why am I thinking that? Like, why would I think Ooh. give up snowboarding, it right? Passion. Doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. And, and so then I prayed again. I just said, God, protect my friends, you know? And again, at this thought, give up snowboarding. And I was like, this is crazy. And even I could have justified staying snowboarding, even with the Bible, because mm -hmm. I went home and I was like, well, God wants me to use snowboarding to glorify him. Right. And he wants me to use it to, as like a passion. He gave it to me. But all of that was still an idol that was keeping me from experiencing the true life that comes from going fully surrendered to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I gave up snowboarding that winter. I decided to read through the Bible in 90 days instead. And then every day I prayed and just said, God, if you're really that good and you're really that real, come and show yourself to me. Every day I prayed the same thing. God, if you're that good, you need to change me. You need to come and show yourself to me. And that was in that process when the Holy Spirit came uh, over me at a youth group. And I, I mean, I just can't explain it except for I felt God. Like I felt like I was connected to an electric generator. Like something was just, hmm. something was inside of me. And I left that room and just knew I will never be the same. And it was from that point forward that I've never looked at pornography at, again, after I was addicted for seven years, I was freed of the depression, all that stuff, because the spirit of God was now residing in me. He hmm. filled me. Wow. So, that's my passion is for people to know that not religion. Cause I went to the church my whole life. Yeah. I even prayed the sinner's prayer. Right. I, I would yeah. even like read the Bible. I knew the verses, oh, wow. but I didn't know Jesus yeah, truly. Um, mm. So, okay. Last thing I'll say is I think there's a big trend right now in Gen Z of like, Okay, cold plunging, you know, breath work, meditation, mm -hmm. like life hacking to like help with anxiety and to like m have a better life, which is all can be fine. You know, okay, yeah, good, good exercise, you know, take care of your body. But if you do all of that and do not have the Holy Spirit, you will still be empty. You will still not have fulfillment and you will still uh, miss out on the fullness of God's plan and God's love. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little concerned because we've started to replace all this stuff with like, you know, life hacking. I'm doing all this like stuff to make my life better, which is good. You know, people are like turning away from alcohol now because they're like, they realize how bad it is. And they're like, okay, now I'm going to cold plunge. I'm going to wake up early. I'm going to do all this stuff. That's amazing. But if you don't have this Holy spirit, you are still going to be empty. Wow. So you have to, let go of all of that and seek him alone. And that is what's going to give you true fulfillment. Mm. So powerful, man. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, there's a gym by our house. <laughs> it's called self-made. <laughs> and, and I was thinking, man, that's, that's a lie, you know, <laughs> that's right. But, um, but anyways, I love that, you know, cause the Holy spirit and even tapping into like the younger generation, you know, uh, I was 17 when I had a, I'm going to say maybe an encounter with God. Yeah. That was super profound. And I felt him speaking to me. And, and I mean, it was through a person, you know, there was a preacher and the preacher was saying things, but I was praying to God. You know, I wasn't praying to this preacher. I wasn't yep. even paying attention to who was there. Not even the music. I'm sure there was worship going on because it was yeah. a, a youth event. But I was talking to God, you know, I was there and I was on my knees and I was having a conversation with God 
And then uh, this person came, you know, and, and made me stand up. And then he started praying for me and speaking into my life, right? And he said, I'm going to use you and I'm going to use your dad. And, uh, you know, it was just like, I felt it was God speaking in that moment, even yeah. though it was this man speaking to me. Yeah. Right? It's like, oh God. And then he said also, he, he said these words, he said, well, the man said at the beginning, the Lord has heard your prayer, Wow! you know, and you moved his heart. And then even as I still remember that, it's yes. like, oh man, so powerful. Yes. Because to think that a prayer of like this little human can yes. move the heart of God. Yes. You know, I mean, that's, that's insane to think like there is. He saw you. Yeah. Yes. He knows you. God is real. Yes. Right. And then you start reading scripture and it's like, these people are are real you know peter yes. when when he denied him and yes. he's looking at him and then jesus looks and it's like <clears throat> the rooster crows yeah. you know and peter weeps bitterly because like oh man i thought it was going to be different what's going on here yeah. and i said i was not going to deny you now i'm doing it you know but this this were real moments with jesus and all of that right it's until Jesus said, you will receive the Holy Spirit and yes. you will receive power yes. right, in uh, Acts chapter 1, 8. Yep. So wow. it's it's so profound that as Christians, we can we can be followers of Jesus. We can be Peters, right? Yes. Following Jesus, but it's, it's not the same Peter before the Holy Spirit that the Peter after the Holy Spirit. That's right. <laughs> Right? That's right. So which one do you want to be? The one that kind of like even follows Jesus? Yep and says oh i'm willing to die for you right or the one that has encountered the holy spirit in which jesus said it's better that i leave and you yes. receive that right so that's right and it's those moments that kind of like keep at least for me right i keep going back to that moment like god you were like you're so faithful but yes. you spoke to me so tangibly yes that i can't deny it you know yep. and even though it was so like so long ago in a sense like god has no time right so and i wonder how um how god is still reaching the next generation yeah you know the next group of young people who will have encounters like i did who maybe 30 40 years from now will yeah. be doing whatever is the next thing you know media or podcast but it's it's about um surrendering that's right even those things right like even even yep. the things that you think oh god you made me for surfing right well can you give it up that's right mm. ah i mean and that's i mean that's kind of like a thing with why when too right there's a yeah. why when for everything there's a yeah. why when for media yeah. I, surfer i remember Hawaii. telling beto i'm not a past wife pastor i'm pastor never word, gonna yeah. preach no way it's not <laughs> my thing like so we are like and here i am <laughs> i know She's whatever you say that oh man yeah no, it's, so. it's really good. Um, and I think even what you're saying with Peter, before the Holy Spirit encounter in Acts 2, Peter was the most zealous. He was, even Jesus himself called out to him, hey, called out and said, you know, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven, mm -hmm. I'm going to... I'm going to build my church on that rock of revelation, or some people think he is the rock, whatever. He had passion. He had zeal. He stepped out of the boat. He said, I'm never going to deny him. But when push came to shove and the tension got mm. intense and they were literally crucifying Jesus, he did not have the strength within him to stand. He yeah. denied him. Mm. But then fast forward 40 days, day of Pentecost comes. The same Peter who denied Jesus in front of a servant girl is now in front of the entire nation of Israel. The same people that just brutally murdered Jesus and he stands up knowing that if they just killed Jesus, they're probably going to kill nice. me too. Mm -hmm. And he says, you killed the Lord of glory and this is now the Holy Spirit and he calls them out. And the Holy Spirit comes and convicts them and 3,000 were added. But imagine the boldness that it took for him to stand up in the face of the same people that just killed his Messiah mm. and to stand in that moment. It only came from the Holy Spirit. Because mm. just yes. 40 days earlier, he's literally just with a servant girl. And he can't even say that he was one of them. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's what happens when things get tough. We don't have it within us, but the Holy Spirit will give it. Yeah. Um so, I, I mean, I say this to, you know, Gen Z, you can't manifest your destiny. <laughs> wow. You can't manifest your destiny. You can't be self-made like that gym is. Everything that is good that you've worked towards, that you've got given, comes from God. 
Everything does. And yes, there's a partnership. You know, you work with him, but it is a gift from him and it's a gift of your Holy Spirit, of, of his Holy Spirit. Uh, and I know people who are maybe not Christians or they're skeptics and they're like, man, my life's pretty good right now. And everything I've seen from God, he seems like angry or whatever. So I would much rather live without him. And I'm like, no, you don't understand that because everything good you're experiencing here, even if you don't acknowledge it is from yeah. God. Mm -hmm. And hell is not so much like a place of, uh, it is punishment, but it's not so much like a place of like torture as it is just separation from God's presence. Mm -hmm. And if God is the author of love, so only love is only found in God. Goodness is only found in God's presence. When you're separated from that, what is resulting is is pain. It's torment. It is there's no good thing, and that is what hell is. So when I mean people are like, hey, I would rather go to hell because of this or that. You know, I'm good without God. I'm like, no, you're not. Even though you're not acknowledging God right now in your life. Everything that good is happening is because of him. Yes. And all of the pain that you see is a result of the fall and a result of the thief. <laughs> so we get it reversed. We blame God for the bad things. And then the good things that happen, you're like, well, it didn't happen because of God. I self-made it or whatever. Mm -hmm. We don't recognize the yeah. true reality. Yes, that's so good. And Jesus called it the kingdom of God, right? The goodness of God is the kingdom of God. That's right. So we've experienced that. Ah, oh, man, so good. I guess uh, we're going to wrap it up here. I was looking at the time. I was like, man. Is it time? We have so yes, much time. more to say. <laughs> we have so much more to say. Well, now you know that this is this is your studio, man. We'll, have more, you, we'll have more conversations. You have the link too, you know, so we can you know, either have more conversations or you want to bring people here. Uh, let me know. Use that link. Say you know, to the people that you know, hey, I know a place where I want to take you. We'll record and let the Holy Spirit roll. That's right. Yes. yes. Right? Yeah, let's let's finish with prayer. Can I pray us out? Yes, yes. please. Be great. Yeah, God, I thank you so much. And for anybody that may be watching this, mm. or watching this in the future, I pray that you would come and you would speak to them and that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit and awaken something within them to really experience your presence. And God, I thank you so much for this studio and uh, Beto and, and Millie. And I pray that you would bless them right now with the power and presence of your spirit, that you would fulfill within them everything, every good and perfect plan that you have in their life in Jesus name. And we just give to you our lives and ask God that you would awaken this generation to your gospel and to your goodness in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, my friends just want to say if you're tuning in, watching, listening on Spotify, all those good places to like, subscribe, share the episode if it added value to your life and visit us at christianpodcast.com. We'll see you guys on the next one. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. There we go.